freedom, opportunity, accountability, and compassion. These are the foundational values that form the basis of the public service of President and Mrs. Bush. And these are the values that form the basis of everything we do at the Bush Center as we execute our mission of combining policy solutions and public engagement to ensure opportunity for all, strengthen democracy, and advance free societies. We combine ideas and action to improve the lives of people at home and around the world. Continuing to support and elevate PEPFAR serves this mission extremely well, and it is a big part of our global health work. I'm Ken Hirsch, President and CEO of the Bush Center, and it's an honor to be here today. Before we get started, I'd like to thank our supporters, who, without whom we wouldn't be here. Bank of America, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and FlexJet, and members of Congress, the Diplomatic Corps representing PEPFAR's partner countries, the many architects of the program itself, Ambassador Dr. John Nakengasong and his staff at the Office of the Global AIDS Coordinator, and country PEPFAR teams with the help for their help in this event and their ongoing partnership, plus all the organizations, individuals, and supporters who have contributed to 20 years of an incredible story. Now, why is the Bush Center here in DC to celebrate 20 years? It is not because President Bush misses Washington. <laughs> we are here to celebrate what works when policy is shaped by principles. PEPFAR has saved over 25 million lives and is a shining example of principles in action. We are here to keep the emphasis on the need to continue reauthorizing PEPFAR and the Global Fund. We are here to remind ourselves of what great countries do. Great countries recognize that the human condition elsewhere matters here at home. Great countries recognize that helping others while demanding accountability and building capacity creates sustainable well-being. Great countries recognize that asking for nothing in return actually generates infinite returns. And we are also here to remind ourselves what is possible when we work together. PEPFAR was passed in 2003, and as of today, over $100 billion in cumulative funding for HIV AIDS treatment, prevention, and research has been provided. It was originally passed in the House with 375 votes and a voice vote in the Senate. It has been sustained by four administrations, two Republican and two Democrat. And it's been the law of the land through Democratic, Republican, and split Congresses, 11 in total. As an example, on its 10th anniversary in 2013, with a Republican-controlled House and a Democrat-controlled Senate, it passed the House by a voice vote and the Senate by unanimous consent. It's been reauthorized three times, and we call on Congress to reauthorize it for a fourth this year. PEPFAR is a case where policy shaped by great values works. PEPFAR furthers the ideals of freedom. We showed the world the fruits of the American spirit and how that can be exported to help others. Our brand of democratic capitalism produces enough benefits that we have room to share. More importantly, it's been documented that our providing aid for health correlates with state stability. PEPFAR furthers the ideals of opportunity. Countries where a third of the population are dying as was the case in several African countries in 2002, breeds hopelessness and becomes ripe for corruption and extremism. We take steps to replace poverty and disease with hope. It has been documented that countries with higher PEPFAR investments have had greater worker productivity and economic development. PEPFAR had accountability baked in. Combined with the Millennium Challenge Corporation, PEPFAR demonstrated how real accountability can be built into massive aid programs to align interests and build local capacity for success with networks of partners to share the burden versus the inefficiency of central planning. But most of all, PEPFAR was compassion in action. When President Bush took office, nearly 30 million people in Africa were inflicted with AIDS, including three million children, and only 50,000 people were receiving medicines. President Bush described this motivation in his 2007 State of the Union address when he said, our work in the world is based on a timeless truth. To whom much is given, much is required. We hear the call to take on the challenges of hunger and poverty and disease, and that is precisely what America is doing. Asking nothing in return other than to welcome free and healthy people into the family of nations demonstrates the compassion of a great nation. This stands in stark contrast to other global powers today who use Belt and Road monies to create indentured servants suffocating under the weight of conditions attached to monies. Why is our global leadership important? 
It is clear now that when we retreat, voids are happy to be filled by revisionist powers who believe in division instead of unity, war crimes instead of humanity, debt instead of support, and control instead of freedom. This global leadership takes three things, clear values that guide policy, courage to act by leaders willing to ignore public opinions and follow their principles, and that we act together here at home. This is a two-front war. We cannot win the global fight for freedom, prosperity, civility, and good governance abroad if our leaders here are practicing incivility, pettiness, tolerance of frauds, and lack of account accountability here at home. Our domestic political division is the greatest national security threat we face. President Bush made that challenge personal in his first inaugural when he said, quote, we must live up to the calling we share. Civility is not a tactic or a sentiment. It is the determined choice of trust over cynicism, of community over chaos. PEPFAR has all the ingredients for success, which is why we are here today, to remind ourselves that we have the capacity to be great and that causes that are worth tackling are successes worth celebrating. On behalf of the Bush Center, our incredible team and our great sponsors and the entire PEPFAR community, it is now my pleasure to introduce our first panel who really needs no introduction. It's an honor to pass the stage to the former President of the United Republic of Tanzania, President Kikwete, Secretary Condoleezza Rice, and the 43rd President of the United States. Thank you. since I had a standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, thank you very much uh, for joining us for this uh, terrific celebration, 20 years. But uh, before we celebrate the 20 years, I think we have to acknowledge that today is the first anniversary uh, of the Russian invasion of uh, its neighbor, Ukraine, uh, something that I think none of us thought perhaps we would see again in the second half of the 20th century, let alone the beginning of the 21st. And uh, I just want to acknowledge uh, that Ukraine has actually been a PEPFAR partner, a terrific partner. Um, it shows that uh, democracies can work together. And uh, the Ukrainian people will win this fight because they are fighting for the values uh, that all of us espouse, freedom and liberty and uh, the right for a good life. And so um, I know, Mr. President, you want to acknowledge those who are with us in the audience. So why yeah, I do. Yeah, there? first, well, now you started with Ukraine. Why don't we recognize the ambassador from Ukraine to the United States? Oh, there she is. Yeah. Probably ought to recognize Laura. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's very instrumental in all this. Yes, and uh, uh, I want to thank you. I thank my pal, Kikwete. He, he's an awesome guy. This is a guy that got on national TV and got tested. First African leader to do so. And it set a huge example. An example beyond Tanzania, and for that we're very. This this program is incredibly successful because of leadership like you, President Kikwete. Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> it's it's also successful because we had great support in Congress. And uh, I don't know if you say former speaker, speaker. They don't call me former president. They say president. But so we go. Speaker Pelosi is here. <laughs> Ma Madam Speaker, thank you. Yeah. Damn, okay. Don't get carried away. <laughs> and Paul. Good to see you, Paul. You're doing well. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. And of course, I thank the Bush. Uh, 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 oh, Wendy Sherman, Deputy Secretary of State. Condi. <laughs> I said, I better re recognize the Deputy Secretary of State. She said, no, no, I only recognize the Secretary of State. But <laughs> no, no, it's the other way around. Not true, right, not true. yeah. <laughs> 
anyway, uh, I want to thank the Bush Center people, Hirsch and Kramer, and uh, uh, I'm here because I don't really come to Washington often, President. And I'm, but I'm here to remind people that uh, American taxpayers' money is making a huge difference, a measurable difference in saving lives, 25 million people. Yet most people in America have no clue what we're talking about. So hopefully uh, this attempt today gets people listening, uh, President Kikwete. And the other thing is, is that I know uh, maybe some in Washington are listening, but this program needs to be funded. And for the skeptics, all I ask is look at the results. And uh, if, if, if the results don't impress you, then nothing will impress you. And so we, we, we're asking for the program to be refunded and to make sure that there's a lines of accountability between the spending of the money and those who spend it. And so anyway, that's why we're here. And I'm here because you're here. Thank you. Yeah, you know, he gave me a lion uh, when I went to visit in Tanzania. Not, not a live one. Yeah. No, it was a dead one. Right. Uh, but, <laughs> but he had his stuff just now in the Bush Library. Right. It's got a little name. It says, Kikwete. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Actually, Mr. President, I'm going to ask you to start. Well, ask Kikwete something. Uh, no, no, no. I've got this organized. I'm, I'm okay. moderating. Okay. I'm moderating. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Mr. President, yes. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to start about the origins of this. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of people who contributed to the origins of it. I see Tony Fauci down there and a number of other folks who were Josh Bolton in that Oval Office meeting when you decided that this was something that had to be done. So talk about your own personal commitment. Yeah, so it's a little self-serving on her part because uh, she walked in the Oval Office. Yeah, and Di Frazier is here. Yeah, yeah okay. Anyway, she walked in, the Oval, <laughs> walked in the Oval Office and said, are you aware there's a pandemic destroying an entire generation of the people of, of, uh, in the continent of Africa? I said, you know, when you're president, you hear a lot of hyperbole. And I said, prove it. And she did. And I, had, I believe that uh, human life is precious and we're all God's children. That's what I said when I was campaigning. And, and I meant it. And uh, we also operated on this, to whom much is given, much is required. And, you know, we're an unbelievably wealthy nation. And yet there are people, a generation is being destroyed. And so that was the genesis. And, uh, you know, a lot of skeptics. But we put together a plan that worked and had a hell of a team, many of whom are here, really good people, yeah. motivated by one thing, human life. Sure. Right. And then we found partners on the continent of Africa, and this is the best one right here. Yeah. Well, let me actually turn to you, uh, President Kikweti, yes. and talk about that partnership, because uh, early on, the President said, this isn't going to work if we don't have partners on the ground. The, the United States can't swoop down and solve this problem. So mm -hmm. you were among the early and uh, best partners, and so talk, talk a little bit about that. Well, <coughs> President, let me first thank you for having me here. Um, we are friends. Yeah, very good. <laughs> so when I got the invitation, I said I can't say no. But let me first commend you for conceiving the idea of the plan. The, the problem with HIV, HIV, AIDS, has been a big problem. People are losing life. And prior to, to PEPFA, a diagnosis of HIV positive was like a death sentence. Because somebody would, you're just telling somebody that you are going to die. The question is when? But when AIDS, when, when PEPFA came and started becoming operational, it is no longer the case. It was particularly when the antiretroviral treatment was made available. So <clears throat> Tanzania had partnership with, with PEPFA since 2003. Right. 
So as we celebrate 20 years here today, we are also celebrating 20 years of partnership. I became president in 2005, two years later. But during the campaigns, I, I promised that I'm going to tend to, 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 to intensify the fight against HIV AIDS. Of course, when I began, I began with the normal advocacy, the ABCs, abstain, be faithful, uh, use protection. It was not good enough. So it came to my mind that I think, let's start, do something big. Let's launch a nationwide campaign for testing. I think if, if we have everybody tested and everybody knowing his or her status, those who are HIV positive will know how to behave and those who are HIV negative but they have been a bit notorious, they know now <laughs> they have to, to behave better. <laughs> But my, my challenge has been, how do I get the test kits? So I called the US ambassador to State House. It was Michael Ritz, I think. I said, uh, Ambassador, I have, uh, I have a plan to intensify the fight against HIV AIDS. But this will only work if you say yes to my request. So what is the request? Said, test kits. Say, President, just do it. The United States government will be there to help you. So that's how we began. And this was December 2006, mm -hmm. during the commemoration of the 1st the of December 2006. And I, I planned for July. It gave ourselves seven months to plan. I remember the 14th of July 2007. We launched this major campaign at a big square in Dar es Salaam. And I said, you know, people are afraid of testing. So the best thing is for my wife and I to lead by example. And we should not do it under the tent where nobody sees it. We'll be under the tent, but let's have television cameras beaming, blood being drawn, being taken to the, to, 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 to the labs, of course, my veins were easy, but my wife <laughs> had some problem. The prequel several times before they, they could get the. I was very sorry for her. <laughs> but you said that, that, that's the price of leadership. <laughs> yeah, so we, we got tested. And because I got tested, we had so many people on that day. 11,000 people tested at that square. Yeah. Yeah. And that was to be the beginning of making testing something normal. Mm -hmm. A habit then we began to be built. I'm told up to now that the voluntary testing, I think, has gone beyond 20 million. They are going to us 30 million in the country. But the, the advantage we had is that one, it, 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 it cleared the, the fear of testing because the president and his wife have tested, but it also helped with stigma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because people fear to go tested and, uh, and then given a, a positive test. And then after that, society stigmatizes them. And then after that, we came up with, uh, uh, and then it, it, it uh, gave people the courage to, to, to declare their status. So it so somehow helped with that. But, <clears throat> but when we were actually, when I was campaigning, because the six months I had to campaign vigorously, people have been asking me questions. If I test positive, what happens? Because that's, that's like going to a court of law and we hear death, death by hanging. Yes? No, I said, don't worry. Antiretroviral 
treatment is there. So it is PEPFAR that gave me the audacity to launch this campaign. And well, it has helped. Uh, at, the, at the time I was president, preference was 7% seven, was seven by the time I left 2015, it was 5.1. And it is much lower now. That's great. So you, you, can, you can see uh, so how, how, how through a, a, ARVs, many lives have been saved. But through ARVs again, when with building the capacity for viral load testing, many people have been prevented from being infected. Those who have tested positive will become careful. And those who have become positive, but uh, also the viral load, because they, I think there's a certain threshold. When the viral gets to that threshold, even if the guy is negligent, he will not be able to infect anybody else with, with the virus. So that's the importance of viral load testing. And it has, it has increased. I think we are now going to us, to us 97% yes, of, of, of the samples, this testing. So I'm saying um, this has been a wonderful initiative. But the important thing, the other important thing, the United States is the first country in the world to invest in the fight against one disease. <laughs> There's been a lot of, of works, but the US is on, in history. The United States is the only country that has focused on one disease. Because everybody is doing that, they said, but the US has been the only country, so thank you for your compassion. Yeah, well, thank the people, not me. <laughs> I, I was just president. <laughs> <laughs> also, also as, as, as the president has said, I also say thank Congress. Yeah. Yes, because if, 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 if the government has taken that decision, and if they sent it to Congress, and Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell said no, <laughs> we, we wouldn't have, have, have had, the, the, we wouldn't have had PEFA funded. So this is also the other thing I'm saying, I'm saying thank you so much. And Nancy Pelosi is, is here. Uh, we, we also thank Congress. But the most important thing is we thank the people of the United States. There you go. Yes, because you have shown when you decide to care, to take, to take the interest of the others, mind what, what it means. Mr. President. Um, yes. Yes. Did you want to say something, or did, should I? Uh... Well, I was, I was going to uh, say that as a result of PEPFAR, uh, it enabled African countries to deal with other diseases. As I was told last night by an expert, that uh, African nations were more likely to be able to deal with COVID when it hit because of the PEPFAR platform. Yes, sir. And uh, when, when the great contribution, not only saving lives, but leaving behind a a healthcare structure that had not existed prior to 2003. Anyway, go ahead. No, no well, Mr. President, I was actually going to ask you about some of the success factors because uh, the compassion of the American people, uh, I think, is really endless, but they want to see results. That's it. And the way that this was set up, first of all, uh, not bureaucratically, it was set up in a way that the leadership that I see people like Mark Dybel out there and, and uh, Debbie Burks, the leadership was able to really act quickly, uh, to work directly with, uh, with the Congress, and it, it was successful because it didn't get caught up in a lot of the bureaucracy. So can you talk a little bit about that? Well, there needs to be an age coordinator in the State Department that reports to the Secretary of State, for starters. Uh, and that way... <laughs> Not to be doing your business, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> that way people can be held to account. One of the real problems you got uh, sometimes in Washington is authority and responsibility are not properly aligned, and therefore no one is to blame if something fails. And this program was set up where when it didn't work, we could call Dieball in and say, what the hell is going on, man? <laughs> Fix it. 
and, uh, and it, uh, we had clear goals. Oftentimes, uh, there's too many goals. Mm. Our goal was to save lives from AIDS, and, and they were measurable. Uh, Deb Burks did a hell of a job of setting up fact-finding, you know, so we knew exactly what was where. She can wear you out on all that, by the way. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, and so the structure matters, I think, is what Condi's saying. You can't hold people to account unless you align uh, authority and responsibilities, which we did. And uh, I think your point is we, we hope we keep it that way in order to be successful. I mean, this is a program, you know, a lot of people had a lot of skepticism about government programs. You can't have skepticism about this one. <laughs> it measurable results. And, uh, you know, 25 million people live who would have died. It's extraordinary. And is that in our national interest? Absolutely. We're a, we're a great nation and a moral nation. It's our national security interest as well. So I'll never forget uh, traveling the continent of Africa and, and meeting with orphans. As a result of the pandemic, there were a lot of orphans. And had the rich nations turned their back on the orphans, uh, there's another group that would have showed up called Al Qaeda. They were very active in East Africa. Remember those guys? Yeah. And, uh, and they just said, look, Americans don't care about you, but we do. Join our family. And then all of a sudden, we'd be dealing with a revived terrorist network that had destroyed people in your country and in Kenya prior to that. And they were very active. And thankfully, you were also tough on terror. You're tough on AIDS and tough on terror. Glad you weren't tough on me. <laughs> <laughs> it was duty. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, th yeah. good leading question. Right. And I'd like to ask. President Kikweti, another question also about how we succeeded. And a lot of that was your leadership in your country, but it was also enlisting other African leaders to lead. Mm. And uh, I said to President Kikweti, we were fortunate that we had a particularly good set of African leaders at the time, people who cared about their country, countries, people who cared about their people, and people who were effective in their leadership. Can you talk a little bit about the, the discussions and conversations among African leaders about uh, the AIDS uh, pandemic and how to deal with it uh, during that time? Yeah, of course, as, as you rightly said, you know, leadership makes a huge difference. If, if the leadership is not responsive enough, if the leadership doesn't put in place the right policies, uh, the leadership doesn't put in place the, the institutions to implement those policies, the structures, thinks things won't work. And of course, well, fortunately there are many good leaders in Africa, um, except there are exceptions there definitely. And I think this is, this is what has, 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 really, has really helped. Um, because we share experiences. We share experiences. How have you done it? How, how, how have they done it? You know, our, our first case of, of AIDS were three people. Uh, the first diagnosis was in 1984. Mm. And these three people were, were living on the border with Uganda. And at that time, the, the, the disease had already become permanent in, in, in Uganda. And after that, it just spread <laughs> like a bushfire. And then uh, the, the whole country. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> not, not you, not you, no, okay. not, not, that, not that bush. You. <laughs> yes. Uh, in, in, the, in, <clears throat> in, the, in the whole country. Um, then we had people dying. There was nothing that they could do. As I'm saying, when, 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 when PEPFA came in. So we put up the, the structures. The, good, the other good thing about, about PEPFA is that it also helped us establish the programs for response. Mm -hmm. It also helped us and train the health professionals. I think about 750 were trained through a CDC special program. 
on training. So you, 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 have, you, have, you have already a program in place. You have, you have the, the, the health professionals, yes. So they also, through PEFA, we worked on the, on, the, on the labs. We got assistance for labs. I remember 44 labs had international accreditation. Mm. Yes. International accreditation. So when, when, you, when you have the professionals, you have the labs, you have the structures and the systems, why shouldn't things work? Exactly. And when, when, when you have the commitment. And now, of course, we have, we have a new president, a lady, yes, who is doing so. She sends her regards to you. Thank you. She thanks you for, for the wonderful idea of, 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 of establishing PEPFA. But she's also sending greetings, to, uh, his appreciations to the four administrations, including yours, that has been working on this and to Congress, to the people of the United States. All she's saying is continue the collaboration and cooperation until we, 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 we defeat this disease. And the, the, the target is 2030. Hopefully, we'll get there. And if we are all determined, we'll get there. Because if, in fact, the infection rate was, was 85% in 2010 when I was president. It, it is now 46%. I'm sure in the, in, the, in, the, in the remaining few years, we may be able to get to, to, to the target of zero AIDS by 2030. Yeah, yeah well, uh, uh, we're at the Institute of Peace. And uh, if you're interested in peace, uh, health equity is a foundation for peace. It's hard to have peace. <laughs> it's hard to have peace in a society in which uh, a disease is ravaging the villages and the people. And so, uh, another reason to support PEPFAR is it yields peace, or the foundation of peace. So we thank the Institute of Peace for having us. That's right. Yeah, first time I've ever been in here. I don't think so. No, I was here for the dedication, I know, but I've never been in this place. <laughs> How quickly we forget. But let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the point that you just made, because we're here to celebrate PEPFAR, but I think it also transformed, in many ways, uh, the relationship between the United States and Africa. Yeah. It's something that I have to give credit to successive administrations for continuing to work uh, mm -hmm. in this way. It shows that America can sustain when you have a change in uh, the White House, mm -hmm. uh, when you have changes in the Congress. It shows that we can sustain something like this. But, but Mr. President, you also did a lot around foreign assistance for Africa, girls' education in Africa. I know that President Kikwete is very involved in an international effort now on girls' education. Mm -hmm. The work that we did um, with the, the First Lady on women and women's health in Africa. So PEPFAR really, I think, stimulated a larger framework for peace and well-being uh, in Africa. So I'd like each of you to perhaps say a word about that, and then we'll sure. turn momentarily to the future. Uh, Millennium Challenge Account, and weren't you a recipient of that? Yes. Yeah, a yeah, big okay. one. I That's think a we, big we got, deal. We got the way. largest. Huh? Thank you. Yes, the largest one. Yes. Well, you had to earn it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we just weren't going to dump it on you. You had to have, like, Non-corrupt government. You had to focus on educating women, and we, had, you know, we had criterion, and you sure. made it, you made it mm -hmm. grandly. No, I, we. Uh, one of the things that I learned uh, was the enormous potential on the continent of Africa. Uh, very smart people, if given a chance to thrive. Hardworking people, if given a chance to to make a living, and. Uh, uh, so PEPFAR is really a part of something larger, and that is a relationship between uh, a very important part of the world in the United States. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, it's a framework that other presidents can use and other secretaries of state can use. And, uh, but yeah, it was, a, like, it was an awesome experience traveling to Africa with you. Yeah, I'll never forget uh, being in Uganda in a a group of uh, AIDS orphans um, singing God Bless America. Yeah, I don't yeah. think there was a dry eye uh, in the place. Yeah. So My problem was, uh, Mr. President, I, I get carried away by good music. And uh, <laughs> I got YouTube dancing. 
with African women, and uh, my daughters were humiliated. <laughs> uh, they questioned my moves. <laughs> they did, with good reason. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, do you want to say a word about the broader framework in U.S.-Africa relations and where well, you'd like to see us? Well, uh, I'm seeing PEPFA, Millennium Challenge, PMI yeah. have been major instruments of U.S. foreign policy. They've been touching the life of the people. T take, for example, Millennium Challenge, when we were discussing Millennium Challenge. What, and. That may be beyond my abilities at the moment. Oops. <laughs> All right, Carol, you've done a lot of good work for Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> for a minute, I thought I was hearing voices. No, it's, it's OK. But it is within my ability. <laughs> yeah, because the beauty of Millennium Challenge is you, as a, as a country, you decide what, where your interests are. And then we sit, we sit down with, with the team. We set up a team in, in, in the country at the Ministry of Finance that is working, because I'm the one who, who took the leadership. But we chose, because I remember when we said, just, just choose, then I deliberately, for which I want to thank you, chose those roads where the other donors were not ready to assist. I remember in one of the roads, <laughs> I don't want to mention the, 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 the country. I went spoke about it, says, ah, this is a road from nowhere to nowhere, said then fine. But when we, 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 we listed this in our cooperation with MCC, MCC said that's fine. So we were able to do that road. Because you just gave us the liberty to choose. Of course, we had, we had um, benchmarks to, to, to fulfill on democracy, on human rights, and so on, which, which during my time were not big issues. No, <laughs> they, they are not big issues. So th this is the beauty of, of, of MCC. So we put in the roads, and we got the roads. We put in the submarine cable from mainland Tanzania to Zanzibar. We, we started rural electrification, water, pro, water projects for urban areas. This is us saying, and the United States says, fine, if this is what you want, fine, you, you have it. Then, of course, take, take the case of PMI. Yeah. Malaria. Malaria, yeah. Yeah. Palaria President Malaria Initiative. You know, we, we, we are able, because Malaria is the number one killer disease. It still is. And AIDS was competing with malaria. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which one would be number one? But then we are able to, to with, with, uh, with PEPFA, we are able to deal with malaria, or, with, with, to be able to deal with AIDS. And PMI, we are able to deal with, with AIDS, with, with, with malaria. I was, I was telling Mark, uh, um, outside there, these days, many of the beds that you, that you used to have malaria patients are empty beds now. And thanks to the major contribution that PMI has done. So you have AIDS saving lives, and PMI saving lives. You did a terrific job, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Also, also the, other, the other is, the efforts that have been made on mother to mother to child transmission that that young 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 girl from Tanzania here when President Bush visited us, we went to a clinic. She was still tiny, yeah. And I, I was really amazed. You know, it was also the first time I said, "Oh, so for a, 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 a HIV positive couple, 
can give birth to a, to a baby who is not HIV positive. That's right. So that was amazing. You know so, what happened, Mr. President? Uh, yes. We invited the mom and the, and the little child to the State of the Union address, uh, and I saw a picture of it, and the child was sound asleep. <laughs> At least now she's awake. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, you shouldn't tempt people with a line like that, but I'm going <laughs> I'm to actually, as we're wrapping up here, uh, President, President Kikwete just said something I think is very important, which is that um, Africa was not an object of American policy in PEPFAR or a Millennium Challenger, and mm. it was a partner. Right. And in many ways, trusting the leadership uh, good leadership in Africa to do the right things for its people. But I want, now want you to talk about American leadership because there are a lot of people in our country who think that we should mind our own business. Yeah. A lot of people who think we've got too hard of problems in the United That's States. Wrong. Do you want to make an appeal? Well, I think we're a big enough Americans. nation to do more than one thing. And uh, to continue the fight against AIDS on the continent of Africa and to support the Ukrainian freedom fighters is not going to strain our capacity to help our own citizens. Uh, I don't understand uh, why there's any resistance to a program like PEPFAR, uh, unless we've lost our compassion. And I don't think we have. I think this country is a compassionate country that cares deeply about uh, people who suffer. And uh, I just wish we could take people uh, with us to our, on our trips to Africa and see uh, amidst some pretty difficult situations, the unbelievable joy of life, the spirit of life, and uh, and to be able to enhance that uh, was uh, was a joy. And it was great to work with my pal Kikweta. He's an awesome guy, as you can tell. He's really really a good man. Well, I want to thank um, President Kikweta for being with us. That you honor us by your presence here, Mr. President. Thank you for your leadership. And thank you to everyone here. Um, many people who made this possible and made it happen uh, can't not call out my friend Steve Hadley, who um, is, uh, was extraordinary in all of this and also very involved with the U.S. Institute of Peace. And uh, I just want to thank each and every one of you for your willingness to support this great uh, program. 20 years in, there's a lot still to say about it. Keep fighting. Thank you very much.